Hello viewers, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting a series on cyclic voltammetry and differential pulse voltammetry. We already uploaded few fundamental videos on CV and DPV and we obtained a huge response. In today's video, we are going to talk about different characteristic peak as we obtain from CV and DPV. We'll talk about why a peak become broader and another peak become sharp. The fundamental reason, the equations, all of them will be discussed in today's video. In the first slide, we showed a typical CV diagram and another DPV diagram. In CV, we all know that there are basically two peaks. One is called oxidation peak. It is obtained when the voltage is increasing and the reduction peak, which is obtained when the voltage is decreasing. And this is typical DPV, which uh, gives you different sharp peaks uh, based on the characteristic redox couple present in the system. For this particular one, maybe there are two redox couple present and that is why we obtain two peaks. And out of those two peaks, this peak is uh, peak height is more compared to this one. And that happens, that may happen because of the presence of redox couple of varying concentration. That means this particular redox couple may have higher concentration compared to the shorter one and that is why we obtain a reflection of the concentration in the DPP peaks. We already talked about two contributors of the current and that is Faradic contributor and non-Faradic contributor. What is a Faradic contributor? A Faradic contributor is a true redox reaction that generates or consumes electron and gives rise to change in the current value in the working electrode and non-faradic is nothing but deposition of charges onto the charged electrode based on the Coulombic force of attraction. So briefly we are talking about it as we already discussed them in detail in the previous videos. Here we talk about the current decay for faradic and non-faradic. We already discussed in detail. If you want you can go through the previous videos. So the idea is the non-faradic or the charging current decay faster, the red one, compared to the faradic contributor. So what happens as this guy is decaying faster, if we allow some time to, to uh, allow some time, then this current will die down and whatever current we measure from the emitter, that will be the faradic contributor. So by giving some time, we can actually quantify the faradic current solely neglecting the non-faradic contribution. And that forms the basis of, D of DPV we already discussed in the last video. Today we talk about three different peaks. So this is cyclic voltammetry. The animation is shown. So here I will show the animation again. So here the cyclic voltammetry in case of cyclic voltammetry, we apply a triangular waveform, already discussed multiple times. In this triangular waveform, the voltage starts from a negative value, goes to zero and then reaches a maximum positive value. Again, from maximum positive value, it goes to zero and minimum negative value. And this way, the cycle keep on going. And when we apply, when the voltage is increasing, that is from negative to positive, that is known as oxidative scan, we get an oxidation peak there and when the voltage is coming down, we get a peak which is called redox or reduction potential. Now at maximum voltage, we do not get maximum current. Why is it so? Because the redox potential which is present in the system, that may, has, may have certain value. Suppose I am applying a maximum potential of 0.5 volt but the redox couple is active at 0.35. So I am expecting more current near to the 0.35 volt compared to even 0.5 volt and that is why uh, it is not totally ohmic kind of nature. It is electrochemical nature even though if you are increasing the voltage current value may go down. So by this animation you can see with respect to voltage how the current so this is maximum current again maximum minimum current and going back. So in pulse, what happens? We apply different pulses. If a redox potential is matching with this pulse voltage, then we obtain a peak here. So here there are two redox couple may be matching with these two pulses and that is why getting two peaks. 
and this is linear sweep in linear sweep what happens it is like half of the cyclic voltagram that means we only have this this part where voltage is uh, starting from a minimum value and moving towards a maximum value and he, this is the current response here on the working electrode so here also you see uh, what happens when we reach to a potential which is matching with the redox couple then suddenly the current value keep on increasing it reaches to a maximum again it it, it tries to flat because of another redox couple present uh, in the system we get a deflection like here but uh, one thing is noticeable here uh, in DPV that is differential pulse voltagram these two peaks are prominent although this is having higher height or higher intensity compared to this but still we can we can actually locate there are two peaks but in this case if you see this kind this particular fluctuation may also be an error so prominent two peaks cannot be obtained in linear sweep voltammetry always but in most of the cases dpv can resolve different peaks which are obtained for um, which are obtained from different redox couple present in the system so that is why uh, we need uh, different kind of voltammetry sometimes we need cv sometimes we need dpv sometimes we need linear sweep voltammetry now coming back to today's main topic if you see here this cyclic voltagram peak this peak is little bit broad in nature whereas this peak is very sharp now why this happens this is happening due to the mass transfer contribution so why current is generating again and again i'm telling the current is generating because of a redox reaction which is happening on the working electrode so the reaction is a heterogeneous redox reaction that means there is a working electrodes uh, electrode present the reactant has to come onto the working electrode and then only the reaction will happen so uh, what happens suppose this is the working electrode and what we do we we apply a potential and at this potential suppose this reaction happens say fe plus 2 goes to fe plus 3 so what will happen initially reaction will start taking place and the product will form and the product will go away from the electrode surface by diffusion and new reactant has to come to the working electrode surface in order to get converted into Fe plus 3. That means the availability of the reactant is not always there. It is controlled by the diffusion and convection. So if this reactant are, are diffusing very slowly then what will happen even though the electrode is capable of producing reaction due to non-availability of the reactant the current generation will be low but if this reactant moves faster has a higher diffusion kinetics what may happen they will come quickly onto the working electrode they will get converted that will generate more electrons Sometimes what happens, suppose the product has higher concentration uh, near the working electrode surface but it has also a higher diffusivity. In that case, what will happen, this will actually go away faster from the working electrode surface reducing the concentration of the product near the working electrode. So in a layman language, the concentration near the working electrode, concentration of the reactant and product is guided by the diffusivities of the individual components and those diffusivity play a huge role in deciding the overall current now coming back how overall current is dependent on the reaction rate and the concentration so to in today's lecture we will not go into the technical equations but we just show the final equation form on which the working electrode current generation depend i just want to show uh, this current is a function of the concentration of the oxidant that is c0 uh, at different time and cr at different time so total current has two contributors one is anodic current and one is cathodic current so total current flux j is uh, summation of anodic current and cathodic current so in anodic current this c oxidant concentration is coming this is the over potential applied onto the working electrode other are the physical parameters we'll talk about in the upcoming videos but the thing to focus on is this 
this is the anodic current it is dependent on this particular C0 con CO concentration and this is the current uh, which is equal to this particular one that is the cathodic current and the cathodic current has this component CR. So relative, relative concentration of CO and CR determines the overall J value. Now what happens if some, something has more diffusivity then uh, the con it will actually affect this CO and CR concentration on the working electrode surface. So here we have shown uh, if you see this animation the diffusivity keep on changing so this is a sharp peak diffusivity keep on increasing increase as the diffusivity increases the peak become broader 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 and at, at some point of time the existence of the peak goes up why it happens because this diffusivity control this co and cr concentration and the way it controls determine the nature of the peak so this is what is called mass transfer or diffusivity guidance and the current which we obtain is hugely dependent on the diffusivity and again uh, this diffusion happens due to the reaction itself what happens suppose certain reactant converts into product so more reactant has to come uh, this way uh, it is actually dependent with each other but in case of uh, in case of DPV what we do we actually allow maximum time to reach the equilibrium at the equilibrium state we what we have we have sufficient ion deposited on the working electrode surface now if you start the reaction there are a lot of reactants which are ready to be converted into product and that time you get the maximum generation and maximum current output and that is why the peak is sharp in nature again and again we have told in DPV we have nullified the effect of charging and we have maximized the effect of Faraday contribution and that is why the peak is sharp in nature uh, mathematically this particular equation has huge role in deciding the nature of the peak both in case of CV and DPV we'll talk about this in the upcoming video in detail there are multiple parameters which are uh, there in this particular equation and we have to understand them multiple parameters like we have to understand over potential we'll make another video on over potential we have to understand the C star zero that is the equilibrium concentration of the oxidant CR star that is the equilibrium concentration of the reductant how the equilibrium is reached how what are the effects of heterogeneous rate kinetics all those things are coming and that is called the butler volmer kinetics in this video we form the basis of butler volmer kinetics we have floated few questions why the peaks are different why some peaks are sharp in nature why uh, cv peaks are wide in nature we have floated the concept of mass transfer guidance in deciding the nature of the peak so maybe few more things are not totally clear from this video but this video gives you the idea how exactly peak varies and what are the factors so we keep on moving with more videos and hope those will help you thank you